Hey folks, Sheila here from Design Piles. I wanted to put together another video tutorial for you to show you some of the tricks that I like to use when building out a 3D room design on Design Piles. Now in preparation for this video tutorial I have created a basic template for my board including color schemes and text. Now if you're interested in adding color schemes and text to your design board it's a really good idea to map that out at the beginning of the design process. The reason I say that is because if you're trying to squeeze in your color schemes and your text after the fact, towards the end of building out your full 3D room design, you might find that you're having to shift around a lot of layers of product to squeeze these elements in. So mapping that out at the beginning of the design process is a really great way to get your board organized and save you quite a bit of time um, when it comes to just layering in those elements. So with that said, I'm going to start dragging some product onto the design board and we'll build out this 3D space. So I'll bring in this credenza to begin with and just scale it into place. Um, I do tend to like to work from the back of the room and build my way forward. Uh, it's completely up to you and how you would like to build out your 3D room design. I find it helps me keep my layers organized because every product I drag out onto my canvas will act as another layer. So if I'm layering items one on top of the other and building my way forward, it just makes it a more organized process. Now. With this particular credenza, we can see that we've got a bit of a shadow here underneath it. I just want to clean that up a bit, so I'm going to go to my toolbar up here, and I'm going to click on the Remove Background button. Now I'm just going to slide this toggle to the right a little bit, and you can see that it cleaned up that shadow that was underneath this credenza. So I'll go ahead and save that, and now we've got a cleaner looking product that's added to our design board. So I'll just keep bringing some product out and scale it into place. You'll notice that I'm using these squares, these blue squares in the corner, to scale my product. So if I drag it out, it'll increase the size, and if I drag it in, it'll decrease the size. Just bring out this art piece here. I can see that some of this art piece is also missing, so again, we're going to use the uh, Remove Background tool. Click on that, and then drag the toggle all the way to the left and fill in that background again. Save it, and now I've got a clean image to work with. And we'll just scale a few more items into place. Now you can see that this particular uh, floor lamp is actually sitting on top of the sofa. The leg is coming right out in front of the sofa. To correct that, I'm going to use my um, layers tools up here in my toolbar. I'm going to actually push this lamp all the way to the bottom, which means you're pushing it to the bottom layer on your design board, which is actually going to be behind the empty room image. And now to bring it back, I'm just going to bring it ahead one. And now it's sitting in front of the empty room image, but behind the sofa. So that is a more realistic look for our 3D room design. I just noticed that we've got a bit of a shadow here underneath our sofa as well, so I'm going to clean that up. Go straight to the back, or the remove background tool, and we'll just, there we go, slide that in place, clean up the item, and now we're good to go. So, let's see here. I want to bring in a rug for this particular design. Now, I'm sure you're thinking it. How are we going to add this rug into the 3D room design in a realistic manner? Well, it is shot square on, so we're going to use some tricks to basically hide the fact that this rug is shot square on. But first, I'm just going to clean it up, because I can see there's some uh, of the image missing here. Go to the Remove Background tool, slide that back into place, save it, and now we've got a cleaner design. Now I'm also going to crop this item down and rotate it into place. So to begin with, we'll go to the Crop tool. I'm going to pull on these orange corners and scale this. I'm just going to take a section of it for the purposes of this design. So I'll save that. I'm going to use the round uh, circle here to rotate the rug. And actually I'll just use the edge of this uh, empty room image to make sure that I've got this nice and squared off. 
I'm going to scale this into place. Actually, just a little bit bigger than that. Okay. So we've got it in place now. So now what I need to do is make sure that it's sitting underneath the actual sofa. So I'll go to my layering tools again, hit bottom, and bring it ahead one. So now that it's in place, what we need to do is we need to hide the squared off edges of this particular rug. So I'm going to bring in the chairs. And once these are slid into place, they're going to hide those edges of the rug so that we can, you know what, I'm actually just going to, I'm going to crop this a little bit more because I'm a bit of a fuss pot, so I'll just scale that down a bit more and slide it into place. Okay, that is better. Sorry, some, honestly, I'm a little bit fussy when it comes to things like this, as I'm sure many of you are too. But you know what? It makes better designs, so it's okay to be that way. All right, so now that I've got my chair in place, I'm actually going to crop off the additional edges here, because I really like for my 3D designs to look like an actual photograph of the space. So that means not having all of this hanging over the edges. So we'll go back to our crop tool, and I'm just going to pull on these corners a little bit, and let's see, it's about here. So we'll save that. Now that that's cropped, I'm going to slide it into place. And now it looks as if we've got, you know, it's tucked into that, um, into the edges of the uh, empty room image. So I'm going to click on this and I'm just going to duplicate the chair by clicking on the duplicate button up here. Then I'm going to flip it. And now I've got two chairs for this design, both at the same scale, and it's filling out uh, the basic, you know, the basic layout for this particular 3D room design. So definitely make use of that duplicate tool because it's going to be a big time saver for you. So now that I have that in place, I'm just going to throw in my coffee table, scale this down and into place, and we've, we're going to have to tuck it behind the two chairs. So to do that, instead, I'm just going to actually hit back a couple times. So we'll hit it once, it's tucked behind the one chair, and twice, and now we've got it tucked into place. Okay, so uh, let's bring in some decor. Add these pillows, scale these down into place. I can see that a portion of my pillow is missing right there, so I'm just going to fix that up a bit. We'll go into the Remove Background tool. And I'm going to build that back in. Perfect. Okay. Again, I'm going to duplicate that. And I'm going to flip it and add it to the other side of the sofa. All right. Bring in some additional elements. Scale that light fixture into place. Once you get used to using some of the key tools on design files, I think you'll find that building out your 3D room designs can be quite quick. So it really comes down to uh, just getting familiar with the layering tools, the crop tool, and scale. And for the most part, that's all you need to build out your 3D designs. So again, we can see that this plant is sitting in front of this chair. We need to move it back. I'm going to hit bottom to push it all the way to the back, and then I'll bring it ahead one. So now it's sitting in front of the empty room image, and it's exactly where it needs to be. I'll flip this lamp and scale it into place. And then you can just start adding in some small decor elements to, you know, make, a, make your 3D room design feel lived in. Instead of just kind of like a, you know... A staged space. I like adding a lot of plants uh, to my mood board designs. It adds a nice pop of color and if I'm going to be totally honest with you, I just really like having living elements in my space. So for me, it's a win. <laughs> All right, I'll drag in a few more pillows here for a little pop of color. And I don't know about you, but I don't like everything to be 100% matching, so we'll throw in a slightly different one. I'll just make it roughly the same size, though, so it works in that manner. 
and that's it. It's just really getting used to using the scale tools uh, and the layer tools to build out your 3D room design. So just to reiterate, if you are going to be incorporating color and text into your design, try to map that out at the beginning of the design process so you're not having to shift around all these layers to squeeze these elements into your design board. I hope you enjoyed the 3D video tutorial. If you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to us at any time. And remember that these video tutorials are always available to you on the How It Works page. So uh, you can use that at any point if you just need a refresh. Thanks for watching. Bye.